Specialist, and this is the next video of our Truth About Parental Alienation series and we're going to look at something that causes quite a lot of distress and that is the smear campaign and flying monkeys. They go hand in hand but you can't have one without the other so we're going to cover them in, in one video. So, so many people say why? Why do they do it? what is their motivation and that's what we're going to look at but one of the first things you need to understand is that the smear campaign started a long time before the end of the relationship narcissists will do anything they can to protect themselves they will do anything they can to make sure everyone thinks that they're either a hero or the victim so say for example a kid, you know, your child acts out at school and you get called in, the narcissist will automatically, to cover themselves up, they will imply that it perhaps is your fault. So this may be that they say, oh, they're upset because we had a row last night, I was angry because he's drinking too much, or... Um, we had a row because she wanted to go out all the time and it's very subtle and they'll do it in a way that it seems like they're not having a go so they won't they won't say anything too concerning for people to get involved but they'll say something that kind of is enough to lay a seed because essentially what they're doing if they are trying to get people to create a hypothesis of you they, they want everyone to have an opinion of you as a certain way so it may be that you've got a drink problem you've got mental health problems you've got a temper and so they're planting those seeds like i say during the relationship to protect themselves so they're gathering already gathering the flying monkeys around them they're already making sure that people are looking at you in a certain light and then what tends to happen is as things unfold your natural behaviour, which might be anger, frustration, upset, that all adds as proof of that hypothesis. So say, for example, they said, oh, you've got a mental health problem. And then two weeks after they said that, you turn up for school uh, to pick your kids up and you haven't had a shave or you haven't washed your hair. School will then go, oh, they said they had mental health problems, maybe they're having a relapse. So they, you see how it goes on and then when it all blows up and you're angry and frustrated and upset, they're, they're just going to think it's because you're mentally ill, they're not going to do it. So it's very clever how they create this. They build up this, this picture of you in everyone's mind, in all the flying monkeys' minds, so that when the inevitable happens and the relationship comes to an end, they already have everyone around them. They already have their army of people believing that you are a certain way. The second thing that it's important to remember is that a lot of what they say as part of the smear campaign is actually a projection of their own terrible behaviour. Again, this is all about protecting themselves. So they will say that you're this, you're that, you're the other, but actually it's them that's doing that. They are just projecting. So Because what they want is they don't want anyone to look here. They don't want anyone to look at them. So they're going, look over here, look over there. So there's a lot of misdirection. And everyone will be so busy looking over here, over here, that they're not noticing what's going on right in front of their noses. And given what they've already created, given the start of that smear campaign, it just adds weight to what people are already believing. And this is why it can be so frustrating for you, is because you haven't done anything wrong, and yet no one can believe, no one believes you. Everyone's believing them, and you can't understand why. You can't understand why no one is listening to you. And this is why, that because they've already... They've already got this idea that you're a certain way 
And so when the narcissist projects all of their behaviour onto you, it just fits in with their already formed opinion of you. Um, and so it, it, the more frustrating that becomes that no one's listening, the more you add weight to the argument. Um, and that's why it's so important to try and have a good support network and keep your emotions in check. Because ultimately, every time you lash out or get angry or do anything, you're confirming their beliefs. So it's, when we say grey rock, and we mean grey rock with everyone. Everyone involved, actually, is just be calm, be very boring, don't react, because every time you do, you're just you're confirming the hypothesis that they already have about you. And the final thing to remember is that they want to discredit you. They don't want, they're going around telling everyone that you're this, that and the other because they don't want anyone to see that it's them that, those, that, that are those things. And so if they, if they say that you're mad or that you've got a drink problem or that you are aggressive, when you come out and say, well, actually, they were really abusive towards me, everyone's going to go, yeah, okay. Because it doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense with what they've already been told. And so, again, this adds to your frustration because they, they've already discredited you. They've already basically told everyone that you're the problem. You're the person who's all of these awful things. So when you say it, you just sound like a mad person. And so the distance between you and them becomes bigger and bigger because every little thing that you do adds to their proof and makes everyone believe them so their their credibility goes up and yours goes down even though you've done nothing wrong it's very perverse but it's how, how they do it this is exactly how they do it they create such a disparity between the truth that everyone falls for it because they've created this hypothesis and you add to it with your behavior and like i say that that distance becomes bigger and bigger and bigger and then every little thing that you do you get a, you get told off for, you get um, judged for, you you basically make your situation worse because of that distance. And again, going back to grey rock, don't give them that, don't, don't get involved, don't try and defend yourself because if you can stay there, they will push and push and push. The narcissist will, if you give a narcissist enough weight, they will hang themselves. So it's all about you staying at this level and then they can act out and they will get more and more outrageous and slowly but surely people will start to see that. But what tends to happen, and this is why it's about enmeshment and um, cult-like status, is that people, the flying monkeys, they will have experienced or they, and they're seeing how you're being treated and they won't want to go through that. They won't want to be on the outside. They want to stay within the inner circle. And so they behave. They help them to discredit you to protect themselves. So they're probably being told um, or implied that they won't get to see the children. They've seen how they're treating you so they know they're capable of this. And so they just go along with it. And it doesn't help you, but they keep within the inner circle out of fear, out of fear of being treated in the exact same way and people who do stand up to them will get pushed out, they will get completely cut off and so ultimately the narcissist only keeps people around them who are pandering to them, who will go along with them and if anyone dares to step outside of that they will be dismissed and people don't want that, they want to stay within that inner circle. So one final important thing though is the narcissist will unravel. As more truth comes out, which it always will do, and if you can stay calm, that will make them angrier and angrier and their behaviour will get more ridiculous, more outrageous. People, More and more people will start noticing, so people will challenge, be pushed out, their circle will diminish. But that's when they can be at their most dangerous because at that point, 
they have got nothing left to lose. So it's important that you keep yourself safe as you start to notice the signs of them unraveling. Do keep yourself safe. I hope you found that helpful. It is a very difficult, difficult area of parental alienation because your natural response is to defend yourself. Your natural response when someone's taking your children and or making decisions about your children and your life is to be angry and upset and frustrated and the longer the process goes on the more frustrated it 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 becomes and it's really hard to keep that in check because it is just your natural natural response to everything that's happening but it does make things worse so it is so important that you try your hardest to in public in front of these people be a grey rock. Do not react. Do not be interesting. Just go along with it. And that's why we have support groups so that you can vent to us. You can come to us and you can go, oh, oh my God, they've done this and I need to say this because it's so, making me so angry. We get it. We understand. We want to hear it. We want to help. But anyone out there, they're not going to. And so it's really important that you do try your hardest to just keep your natural emotions in check. Um, get support locally as well. Um, and just, just make sure that you're strong. You're building your strength from within because ultimately you're going to need it to fight, fight this battle anyway. But it does take a lot of strength not to get angry and want to, want to lash out, want to take revenge, but like I say, they've built it up, so, because they know, they're pushing all your buttons, they know that any normal person would react in that way, but because of how they've set it up, it looks as though you're acting bizarrely, when actually you're not at all, you're acting perfectly normal and natural. So there we go, I really hope that that's helped. Like I say, it is a really difficult one. If you're going through this right now, you absolutely have my every sympathy. It is an impossible, seemingly impossible, but there are things you can do to help yourself. So do take care, do reach out to us if you need anything. Please do contact me at the inquiries at the nurturingcoach.co.uk. I'd love to hear from you. And don't forget to like, comment and share. Thank you very much for your time. Bye-bye.